Have you ever wanted to play a Pokemon game where you could only use really bad Pokemon? No? Well, I made a ROM hack for it anyway. Me making this ROM hack came out of the desire of making my Nuzlocke even harder by only using really underappreciated Pokemon. Because, let's be honest, some of these Pokemon are really cool and just don't ever get to see play. So, I like Pokemon Emerald, and Gen 3 ROM hacking seemed fairly simple. This was one of my first real ROM hacks that I made. I had almost no prior experience whatsoever in terms of Gen 3 ROM hacking. The basic idea was to make a ROM of Pokemon Emerald that replaces all the possible encounters with ones that you normally don't get to see in these runs. Just, you know, taking out all the good Pokemon. And the obvious thing here is, where do you strike the balance between difficulty and variation because you could just take out everything that's not complete utter trash and end up with maybe 50 pokemon at the end that you have to distribute throughout the like 35 routes of hoenn and that's not going to bring you a big variation of different runs or a fun playthrough because you're going to be encountering the same pokemon over and over again so the rule of thumb that i came up with with my stream was it's probably the best to have about 150 ish pokemon left so the list of possible Pokemon went from this to this. You might some, see some Pokemon here that you think are way too OP, or you might think, hey, why is this Pokemon gone? So me and my stream chat spend about two six hour streams discussing which of these Pokemon will let in, and I'm pretty happy with the list I made. I got at about the number of Pokemon that are originally in Pokemon Emerald, so the variation is actually quite high. And you get to see pretty much every un underappreciated Pokemon. Electric types almost don't survive at all here. Turns out firing off stab thunderbolts on high speed is usually good. Um, Electrode seems to be fine. I, we also left in Manectric, but he's in the Safari Zone. And then Plusle and Minun are also in the game. I also realized that a lot of Pokemon gain a lot more viability if you have access to infinite Ice Beam, Flamethrower, and Thunderbolt TMs like you do in Emerald. So I decided it's pretty obvious I need to probably wall off the casino with an NPC. Um, there was other things that I had to do, such as ensuring that the player can't get the Anorith fossil, which is why I added another NPC in the Mirage Tower. And I also decided that breeding should probably be banned since Flareon is in the game, but I don't want people to breed Eevee. Also Hitmonchan is in the game, but Hitmonlee is banned, so breeding that would also be bad. The game is definitely intended to be Nuzlocked, that's the biggest intention, and I didn't make any big quality of life changes or changes to trainer battles, because I figured that, well, I want this to be as close to the experience of Vanilla Emerald as possible, just using bad Pokemon. The link to this ROM, if you'd like to play it yourself, you can get the patch down in the description. It should be linked there. A lot of people are already playing it, and I'd love to hear your feedback about it. I think this could be a really fun adventure for you. I decided to embark on this adventure with my own personal hardcore Nuzlocke rules, no item use in battle, no overleveling the next gym leader, and then the obvious other Nuzlocke rules. I also play with Dupe's Claw, so I can't catch the same Pokemon twice. And that was pretty much about it. Picking the starters was also an interesting question. We tried a few configurations, and I'm actually pretty happy with what we came up with. The starters ended up being... Spoiler alert, I guess. Slugma for the fire type, Goldeen for the water type, and Sunkern for the grass type. Slugma is super annoying to play in the early game, but it has a lot of fun tools in Flame Body, Smog, and Yawn, so you can play around with status a lot. And then you might think, hey, Goldeen actually seems pretty good, especially for Roxanne. Yeah, except for the fact that Goldeen doesn't get a water type move until level 38. Yeah. So those are the three starter options. Maybe you're already you've already made up in your mind what would be the best one here. Um, but maybe go find out yourself and play the ROM. Pokemon placement was another thing. I tried to place Pokemon so that you couldn't get certain Pokemon before certain gym leaders. I tried to avoid almost all water and grass type encounters before Roxanne. I believe the only grass type encounter outside of the starter that you get before Roxanne would be Hophip. I tried to obviously place stuff like Zigzagoon or Rattata early because it just kind of makes sense. And then some more interesting stuff like Smeargle, Ditto, and Unknown early as well. So you could actually delve into using those in the early game before something like Unknown starts to fall off drastically. Let's jump into my own run of this game. If you'd like to avoid spoilers to which Pokemon are on which route, I'd uh, invite you to go download the patch now, play the game for yourself, and let me know how you felt about it. So I jump right into attempt one, and 
I picked Slugma because Slugma is a pretty fun boy and I love him. I, I mean, just look at this fing guy. I swear, you, just look at his fing face. And I immediately lose to rival one. I don't grind enough. You Usually, I assume that the first rival fight is always free because it's kind of rigged in your favor in most games. But in this game with Slugma, not so much. He just wasn't able to quite hold up against the Mudkip. And that's wipe number one right there. So, after. Obviously an appropriate time of morning. I attempt attempt to so like right away We start with Goldeen, which again doesn't get a fucking water type move until level fucking 38 Why the f would you I'd like to also mention that by my nuzlocke rules uh, Route 101 is usually skipped as an encounter because in Emerald that's where you encounter your starter Gift encounters are not extra encounters by my rule set so early game, we pick up some pretty standard stuff. We get the Zigzagoon, we get the Poochiana, we get the Venonat in the forest, we get Unknown north of Rustboro, we get Lediba, which is fucking bad. Seriously, I made a ROM specifically for trash Pokemon, and this thing still went underneath any sort of bar I could have ever set. It's so fucking bad. It's so unbelievably bad, I can't even- And we get a Iggly buff, which we unfortunately have to friendship grind. I might raise the base friendship levels in this game at some point or something, I don't know. Anyway, I lost Poochie and I invented that to grinding immediately because if I don't lose any Pokemon at grinding, it's really not a Pokemon challenge, it's not like, let's be real. We uh, challenge Roxanne, uh, the first actually challenging fight of this uh, game, if you're doing a lot of early game grinding, like I've come into the habit too because Kaizo games have left their mark on me. I'm scarred forever. I'm never going to be the same again. I'm broken. So my plan is going in. I have no counter for these Geodudes whatsoever. I just got absolutely nothing. But, but here's the big savior. Unknown has hidden power fighting. So my plan is debuff the Geodudes with Jigglypuff's charm and other kind of support abilities and then take it down with Unknown's Hidden Power Fighting, right? Except Jiggly immediately loses half of its f***ing HP to really f***ing bullshit RNG. Yeah, typical, right? But Unknown immediately takes back the tempo, has a ton of really sick RNG, and um, goes all the way to Nose Pass. Now, listen, I might have forgotten that Nose Pass gets blocked because I just never worry about it because I always sweep this fight with a water type. So I switch to Goldeen to get some supersonic damage, and Goldeen gets trapped and blocked. But, for some reason on this fight, using Tail Whip almost always prompts Roxanne to get her nose pass to use Harden. I, I don't understand, she, I guess she just doesn't like getting her defenses lowered. But what I always do doing that was to always set up supersonic and actually have it hit itself all the time because he would never attack me and only ever go for the Harden after I go for the Tail Whip. Pretty beautiful actually. But, I mean, Supersonic is pretty horrible, and I eventually lose Goldeen. At, th at this point, I kind of know it's risky to go for Jigglypuff for another charm, but I figure that Unknown alone isn't going to take it out. Remember that Hidden Power Fighting is physical, because every fighting type move is physical in Gen 3. So I can't really break through this Nose Pass just yet, and I figure I probably need to debuff a it a little bit. Maybe I can avoid the block, but Jigglypuff also gets blocked after the charm. Actually almost takes out the nose pass on its own because Jigglypuff is a fucking boss. Praise Hbox. I take out all the potions with Jigglypuff, it eventually dies, and Unknown takes out Nose Pass. With a lot of casualties, I can move this run on to Duford. I pick up Paris in Granite Cave, I pick up C dot on Route 110, and we prepare for the Brawly fight. Now my plan was going in that Ledian would actually do pretty good in this fight, right? Bug flying type quadruple resist it's got that supersonic it's got comet punch you know it's it's getting there between all this planning i, I actually just kind of forgot about the fact that letty is complete and utter fucking trash so it just didn't work out for me at all it, it just kind of died it can't do shit. machop just starts setting up bulk ups on it and I try to poison it with Paras, forgetting that Machop also has guts. This this fight was a disaster, I swear to god. I try to switch in like C Dot because I think it's gonna go for Seismic Toss to stall some more poison damage, but he karate chops on Paras for no fucking reason. I lose C Dot. I then have to sack off Paras into killing it with Love Disc. I take some damage, and in this this is so dumb. This whole fight was a huge disaster. I for some reason I thought it was using Endure and not Focus Punch because I can't read. Yeah, Meditite 
deals a shit ton of unnecessary damage to Love Disc with Focus Punch. Love Disc is like the only thing that can help me against Makuhita too, because after bulk up setup, I'm fucked. Literally, my only special type attack at this point in the run is fucking Love Disc Water Gun. I, 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 and at this point, I'm sitting here. I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> my team is so weak. So my plan is to charm Makuhita, but it bulks its attack back up and my water gun does absolutely nothing. Eventually he breaks through love disc, I have no more special moves and I just wipe to Makuhita. And that's attempt two. Time for attempt three. So this is where we decided, okay, we have to actually take some good steps to prepare for Roxanne. So who would have guessed the best starter to pick is absolutely 100% Sunkern. Yes, Sunkern is the best starter in the game. Fucking nice dude. Oh my god. So after picking up some mediocre encounters, including fucking Lettybug again, god fucking damn. I did get Hopip and Smeargle, which are gonna be pretty important later on. I actually almost ended up not getting the Smeargle. I caught it on the last possible ball while it was struggling itself to death, which is actually pretty funny considering what happened much later in this run. And this is where we find out that Sunkern actually absolutely annihilates Roxanne and sweeps it with no problems whatsoever. Praise Game Freak's game balance. Thanks. After fishing up Love Disc, picking up Paris again and Granite, and again getting C dot on 110, I had to get my revenge on Brawly. I actually have my first death here while losing Letty into grinding, but like, 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 ask, seriously, ask me if I care. I don't give a shit about fucking Letty and can fucking die this piece of shit. As our lead for Brawly, we end up picking up Skip Loom, which actually. This is one of the first big things that I learned in this run, and one of those things I was hoping to learn. Skip Loom is actually really cool. We can lead with Sleep Powder to put Machop to sleep. Sleep Powder actually slaps, but man, this thing's offense is so fing ass. Its only good grass type move that it gets early game is Bullet Seed, which I have to teach from a TM. It's actually really interesting if you think about how grass types are kind of balanced around having complete garbage moves but a really good utility early game. Also turns out beating Meditide is actually much easier if you remember it's using Focus Punch and not fucking Endure. Eventually after a few Sleep Powder bulk up cycles and I wear down its HP and its potions, I have to switch out to Beedrill because recovering with Synthesis isn't safe anymore when playing around the crit, but Beedrill makes pretty quick work of Mac Macedonia. The Notorious Rival 2 fight is actually pretty scary for me too in this run because I have no counter for Combuskin. My only counter typing wise is Love Disc and with its stats I can only hope that Combuskin gets a paper cut while double kicking its thin body to death. However, help arrives in the form of Support Togetic. Yawn into Triple Charm turns the fierce raptor into a tame chicken wing which Love Disc has all the time in the world to spray and make all soppy and soggy and disgusting. I don't know guys, I've, uh, I had to think of this analogy and now, now it's in your head too, good luck. In any case, the big next fight is Watson, where most of the feedback that I got from my community and others that have played this game have told me that there is quite a big difficulty spike. Countering both his Magneton and Manic Trick actually turned out to be quite tough with the Pokemon available up until this point, but I'm confident in my team here. I picked up a Dustox west of Mauville. This seemed like the best point to put the Wurmple line to prevent players from sweeping Brawly with them while still having them available fairly early. Well, it turns out Dustox is actually quite the beast, and this fight can be cheesed heavily using the team of Skip Loom and Dustox. In retrospect, my encounter synergy was pretty off the charts this run, but this will become even more clear later on. This fight also sees the advent of a cheesy strategy that I'll be utilizing a lot throughout this entire run, and that's Guts Raticate. My Raticate has the ability Guts, which boosts its attack when afflicted by status conditions. In competitive, this is abused by using a Toxic or a Flame Orb. In this game, because we're Nuzlocking, we can simply utilize Guts by poisoning our Raticate on a Wild Mon and healing it with potions before the fight. It's kind of like a performance enhancing drug that kills you, slowly, with every step. I didn't actually have a single move that even dealt neutral damage to Magneton on this fight. It has a monstrous special attack stat, and Stab Shockwave really, really hurts. It even has Sonic Boom to threaten those grass types that resist Shockwave. However, this is where things become extra cheesy. 
I'm talking cheddar cheesy. Turns out all we need to beat this Magneton is Skip Loom's Leech Seed and Dustox's Protect and Moonlight. This was one of my favorite moments of the run. It made me realize an awesome synergy between two Pokemon I'd otherwise simply never used together and completely disregarded. Also, again, note how these low tier Pokemon are often balanced by getting quite good utility moves early on. It's actually pretty fun. Parasect walls out Manectric, and Nuzleaf and Beedrill eventually help take it down. Zero death to Watson. We're chillin'. The next part of the run becomes a delicate balancing act between what Guts Raticate can and cannot one shot with strength. Remember, I can't let this really in on anything because he's taking poison damage every turn, and Raticate doesn't really, you know, have any defense. I should note here also that this list is made with the assumption that trade evolutions are not possible. This is why Machoke and Haunter are in this game. I pick up Machop and Sableye, who get added to the team, and I challenge Maxi. It's also worth noting that my Smeargle is running Synthesis, Headbutt, and Spore at this point. Getting any move I have onto my Smeargle is fairly easy, as I can just have a Wild Smeargle sketch, for example, my Skiploom Synthesis, which I can then sketch with my own Smeargle. Love Disk is the obvious candidate for taking out Camerupt here, but damn does it suck! Water Gun off of that special attack just isn't enough, even with a 4x weakness. I go for the charm and die to magnitude 8 after Water Gun fails to kill it. You won't be missed, buddy. Let's be real. At this point, Guts Raticate can clean it up, though. I pick up Onyx and Jagged Pass. Onyx... Onyx is... Why is Onyx so f***ing terrible? Here's a list of Pokemon that have more attack than Onyx. Sentret, Nidoran, Female, Joltik, Ditto, Bulbasaur, Chikorita, Finneon, Oddish, Poliwag, Drifloon, Vanillite, Charmander, Piplup, Cyndaquil, Spritzy, Suwaddle, Venonat, Oshawott, Pidove, Tynamo, Nidoran Male, Spinarak. How does this have less attack than, than this? How? I go and challenge Flannery. Guts Raticate easily takes out her first two mons, but then another fat camel stands in my way. Togetic casually flexes his massive 105 special defense cock into its face and tanks an overheat critical. You know, no biggie. However, I end up having to sacrifice it because nobody on my team can take Torkoal's second overheat after the white herb. Egg Boy ended up getting scrambled. Press F, guys. At this point, Attract really starts fuck with me because my team is all male. At least Flannery is tearing down the patriarchy. You know, actually, I'm a Pokemon expert and I happen to know that Sableye has no weaknesses because it is of the dark and ghost type and therefore it cannot be trash because how can a Pokemon be bad that doesn't have any weaknesses? Because it literally does nothing. Nothing. It, it doesn't do anything. No book. No, no offense. No moves. It... Literally, spent one minute on its Bulbapedia page. It's trash. It's complete garbage. In fact, don't just take my word for it. Watch it die to this minus four special attack Torkoal overheat. Horribly. Man, am I glad that this Pokemon doesn't have any weaknesses. Anyway, the death of this gem-eyed trash bag was at least enough to reset tempo of this fight and turn the Flannery fight around. Two pretty big deaths here, but pretty happy with the results. Now for as bad as Onyx's attack is, its defense plus Jump Pluff's Leech Seed was actually enough to take out Norman Slacking. I love these internal de synergies of defensive Pokemon, it's actually really cool. Machoke deals with the rest of the team. Using Surf, I pick up some useful mons like Octillery and Pelipper. We also find a Misdreavus here. This is also the point where Raticate's power level becomes pretty not okay for the purposes of this run. I mean, Guts is an interesting ability, but... Honestly, I think it might just be a little bit too abusable. Although, if you've never done this before, try playing with this strategy in your own regular Nuzlocke. When you have a Guts Pokemon, it can really amp up the power level. Only every other Raticate has it in this run, so I think it might be fine, but Guts plus Stab Facade is just like really insane. He slaughters pretty much the entirety of Winona's team, and Pelipper can clean up what's left. Another important addition to the team here is Plessle. I said before, I think, personally, for Nuzlocke, one of the best possible moves in the entire game is Encore. Manipulating your opponent to using the same move over and over without them switching out because the AI does not switch out on Encore is incredibly useful for Nuzlocke. Plus, it has ample availability of that move. Also, Stab Thunderbolt that I 
get from the new Marvel quest really helps here. This ends up eventually really helping with all the water types that we're about to face, and Maxi and Archie's Crobat. After a lot more new encounters and quite a bit of theory crafting, we come to a pretty cheeky plan for Titan Eliza. We've managed to acquire some dark types with Shiftry, Murkrow, and Crawdont. Titan Eliza, Zatu, and Lunatone only have Psychic as their offensive moves, which don't work on dark types. The plan is to go into the fight hyper aggressively with Raticate and Shiftry to take out Claydol and Solrock. We teach Raticate Shadow Ball, Shiftry has Faint Attack. Eventually this ends up working. Only Zatu and Lunatone are left here and they can't do anything against our dark types and we just win. Look at the smug face on this fuck Murkrow. He knows, he knows. After the whole cataclysm weather bullshit that nobody cares about, we arrive at Juan. And this is where things came full circle. After sweeping Roxanne with Sunkern, the plan was clear. History had to repeat itself. Sunflora, Sunny Day, Solar Beam, Chlorophyll. Time for the sweep. Now granted, Sunflora is still complete utter dog sh garbage trash, so I had to yeet it out the window as soon as the sun ran out, but I think it appreciated the sentiment. Shiftry cleaned up the fight and I was ready for the Elite Four. My victory road encounter ended up being Hitmonchan. Now, in retrospect, maybe I shouldn't have put this here, because it does have some really favorable matchups against the Elite Four, but honestly, like, look at its stats. It, on its own, this really can't compete, even with Glacia and Sydney. It couldn't have done what it ended up doing if it wasn't for the cheesiest of the cheeses. I'm not talking cheddar. I'm talking Brie. The Elite Four could have actually ended up being quite challenging if not for this one ungodly beast that made for the easiest Elite Four of my itemless Nuzlocke history. The Elite Four in this game was annihilated by none other than fucking Smeargle. I was able to get Baton Pass onto it with my Illumise and Swords Dance with my Crawdont. Coupled with Spore, this made for a completely unfair setup Pokemon. Also, by the way, Substitute Shiftry destroys Phoebe's team. It's like not even close. But I really have to say, it was extremely satisfying and a unique Nuzlocke experience to tear through the Elite Four using Baton Pass strats. Just watch how confident I got to be on the champion fight. He's not gonna win, guys. As much as this run ended up having me cheese this game, this is what I really appreciate in Nuzlocke. These are some of my favorite moments when playing these games is getting Pokemon you normally don't use, realizing what's interesting or cheesy or OP about them, and utilizing that to your advantage. And I feel like playing this sort of game isn't only fun in of itself, but can actually help you improve your own runs over time by realizing the strengths and weaknesses of these underutilized Pokemon. Because whether you want to or not, in some of your Nuzlocke's you might be forced to use some of them because you're running out of Pokemon and it's all you have left. If you want to be part of this unique Nuzlocke experience, you should download the patch and join me. Tell me your thoughts on the ROM and if you enjoyed the game. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.